Hey there, welcome to Tone Motion. In this video, we are going to make a new animal custom for the Diva series. Hey rabbit. Yes, I made two rabbits before on this channel. Being the Easter Bunny, my first ever repaint video, and the Decora K Bunny, which was for a doll swap, so I don't own that doll anymore. I really want a bunny character specially made for the Diva series, so let's make one! As a unique characteristic, I'm going to give this character Vitiligo. Vitiligo is a skin condition, where the skin loses pigments and shows skin tone difference. There are many beautiful people with Vitiligo. Interesting fact, Vitiligo also exists among animals. So let's begin and make Jolene Lapin. If you saw a bunny figure in my previous repaint video, then you found the hint. Good luck find the hint in this video. For this custom, I'm going to use this Monster High Claudine head. Together with this female 27cm Obitsu body. Yes, I need all the articulation you can get, because I'm going to animate her. Claudine has a very groovy hairdo, but adds something different to mine, so off it goes. To remove the doll's head safely from the neck pack, I fill a mug with hot water and dunk the doll in it. Leave it to soak for a few minutes and now you can take off the doll's head without any problem. To remove the remaining hair plugs, I go through the neck opening with tweezers. To remove the factory painted face and animal printed flock, I use pure acetone. It's best to soak the flock with acetone to make it easier to remove. Although I love those wolf ears, they have to make place for rabbit ears. To give her digit grade legs, I'm going to use my Dremel and make a cut into her legs. This way I can reposition them later. I want her body tone to match with the Claudine hat, so I'm going to dye it with red dye more. Okay, it's our goal to get this skin tone. Well, here we go! I filled a pan, specially for dyeing, with water and dye. I am dunking the doll in and out out of the pan and checking if I'm matching the doll's head. Well, I think it turned out very good. The joints are a bit darker, but overall a perfect match. The dyeing did give me a small problem. The plastic shrunk and I had to shave some parts, so I could get the body back together. Note the future self by a bigger dyeing pan. Well, it gave me the chance to insert a knot in her back. This makes it easier for me to animate her. Let's switch back to her legs. I used wire and super glue to attach them back together. And now I want to try something new. Can I dye epoxy sculpt? Well, let's find out. First, red dye more. And now for paint. The pigments of the acrylic paint work much better than the red dye more. But the one with acrylic paint gets so sticky it's almost impossible to work with. Some parts of the body don't connect very well. So now you can see grooves and gaps. Because it's shrunk with dyeing. 
I am filling them with epoxy sculpt. Hmm, dyeing epoxy sculpt is still something I need to improve on. And now that the epoxy is dry, let's sand it down. And give her the characteristics of vitiligo. For this I'll be using acetone and a Dremel. Yes, the dye can easily be wiped off with acetone. Hmm, maybe you can also make tattoos this way. To sand down the digigrade legs, I use my bigger Dremel piece. And to make the pigments alternations, I'm going to use a smaller, more precise Dremel piece. Ah, you can still see the gap lining. To hide it, I'm just going to use acrylic paint. I almost forgot, but she needs a hole on the lower back for a bunny tail. Oh, this is very important to mention, Mr. Superclear doesn't work on dyed doll bodies. It will give weird bubbly spots and the dye will come off. So don't use Mr. Superclear, but a liquid varnish. Now that her body is done, let's switch to her head. She's a bunny, so she'll be needing ears. Which I will be making out of wire and air drying foam. This way I can still bend and reposition them. Hmm, the ears are kinda big for a bunny. Maybe one of her parents is her hair? <laughs> Anywho, I'm painting her ears with an honor color with acrylic paint. Then I'm using yarn to make fluff. With a fabric glue, I glue on the fluff on the ears. With wire and tape, I make her an adorable bunny tail. And also cover it with yarn. Let's give her head some fabulous hair. I was thinking of this peach color. I want this character to be a model and an influencer. So dyed long hair will suit her perfect. Yes, gorgeous. With my rerouting tool, which is a needle cut on an angle, I push the strands of hair in the pre-made holes. If a doll's head doesn't have any pre-made holes, you can use a pin tool to make them before the reroute. To secure the hairs from the inside, I use a universal glue and a Q-tip. Oh, I love long hair and dolls. To make the hair less poofy and lay it more flat, I'm going to give her a boil wash. When the hair is all air dried, I'm going to give her some animal features in her face. But first, I need to make a gap on her upper lip to mimic a rabbit's mouth. Now I fill in the gap and connect the mouth with the nose and give her rabbit's teeth with again epoxy sculpt. When the epoxy is dry, I'm going to cover her hair with some scrapped fabric. To prevent any cracks around the epoxy sculpt, I'm going to give it a layer of super glue. 
Now I'm also giving her the pigment alternations on her face with acrylic paint. To seal an acrylic paint, I'm using again a layer of matte varnish. I start sketching in her face with a watercolored pencil. Yes, you can only use watercolored pencils for doll repaints. Oil based pencils won't stick on plastic. When I'm happy with my sketch, I fill it in with acrylic paint. I'm going to give her beautiful teal colored eyes, which is a reference to a future Divas character. <laughs> I want to match her eyebrows with her hair, but to make it more visible, I have to make them darker. Now that I'm darkening her eyes with pen pastels, let's answer the question of the day. Do you think you would ever customize ball jointed dolls? Well, I don't own one, so I can't really customize something I don't have. Although I would like to have one, I don't have any plans to buy one anytime soon because I like to do body modifications on dolls. Ball jointed dolls begin at the price of 200 to 300 dollars. So I prefer to buy cheaper dolls. But maybe one day, I don't know. Well, I'm totally open for a ball jointed doll sponsoring. <laughs> well, do you have any questions? Leave it in the comment section and maybe I will answer them in the next repaint video. Back to the face up. Some last blushing with pastel powders and a spray with Mr. Super Clear and she's all done. With the combination of kit and super glue, I glue in her ears and tail. She still had some bald spots around her ears. So I'm making loose hair wefts and glue them around the ears. For a neater look. Yeah, much better. Okay, let's make her outfit. I want her to wear bright fashionable colors. Like maybe this character is sponsored by many fashion brands. She is an influencer after all. Ooh, and it gives me the opportunity to use this super cute bunny fabric. Oh, look how cute. This is going to be a lot of sewing work. But with the magic of editing, here we have a jacket. A yellow short skirt. A white shirt with colorful lining. And a handbag. I painted some spare epoxy sculpt silver to make miniature buttons. To complete our outfit, I'm using these Lika shoes and socks I borrow from my personal doll collection. And with this, she's all done.
Jolene Lapa will have her first appearance in the Diva series very soon. Being a model, she knows a certain black cat. I would like to thank my lovely patrons who make these videos on YouTube possible. And like always, like if you liked it and sub if you loved it. Don't forget to ring the bell to get a notification so you won't miss the next Divas episode. I will see you in the next video. Bye!